this ACL fight ends in a hospitalization. Let's see if we can figure out where. Uh, so, let's do a medieval combat video review. This one is a special request of an ACL practice set um, against Simon Rorick, we see on the left. And uh, on the right is Charles Nagore. So, what are the first things we look at whenever stepping into one of these situations? First, <laughs> what are they armed with? Or even before that, how many am I fighting? So, this is a 1v1 fight. Both armed with similar weapons. They're um, medium-sized two-handed axes. ACL doesn't allow for uh, axes this short anymore uh, because it, I guess it devolves into a wrestling match. Apologies, a little noisy around here. Um, so the other thing, the second thing we look at is how are they handed? So right here you can see that uh, Simon is left-handed. Charles is right-handed. So we're going to end up with a crossed-up match. And the reason why I say left and right-handed in those cases is most people put their dominant hand forward on any weapon, much as you would a baseball, sti uh, baseball stick, baseball bat, hockey stick, anything like that. So with great weapons, you usually have your strongest hand forward, and that's your guiding hand. And then your backhand delivers a bit of power. But um, so here we see that we're not gonna we're not gonna have everybody facing in directly the same direction. So let's watch. This fight has two passes. Let's go through each of those passes, and then we'll see what there is to see. Now, in ACL, you're fighting to either submission or your opponent being knocked down. So submission happens through pain uh, or exhaustion. So that was a pretty good, pretty good blow there, and that's the fight ender. All right, so that is what we would call a submission ending uh, because he actually gave up before he was knocked down. So let's let's break this down a little bit. Good set of fights. We'll watch the exchanges this time in slow motion and see what we can pick up at a macro level, and then we'll zoom in on the detail. So they got similar range, squaring off. You can see some opening chops, good blocks, nice uh, block with the head of the axe from Charles. Someone attempting to drop a hip shot in, that would be painful. Here you see Charles caught by surprise with the butt stroke, and uh, that's what left him off guard for the uh, follow-up chop. All right here, Charles commits in fully, winds up wide open, not in a spot to defend himself, takes it with shoulder, and uh, then that butt stroke catches him and finishes the fight. Although from what I understand, the fight was already over at that point. So let's break it down a little bit even further. So here you can see uh, that their guards actually are almost like a mirror in this case. So they've both got their top hand is facing away from the camera, the angle of their axe halves is away from the camera. So they're pretty much mirrored at this point. I should point out I'm not an ACL fighter, um, but the things that I see right off the bat, um, you know, you've got an opening to the leg, but if you, if you swing for the legs, your head is pretty open because you've got that short axe and your opponent's going to be able to counter you. And you can swing for the lower arm, which is actually what we see both of them do. Simon here chokes up a little bit. You see the axe head starting to move. And he swings for the arm. That's pretty good targeting as well. He's aiming for the inside of the elbow. That's a really painful spot and hard to armor. It looks like Charles manages to bend his arm enough that he doesn't take it in a really painful spot and the blade sort of glances in orientation. Charles's counter, Simon's able to block that with the haft and head of the axe. Here they're a little bit crossed up. One thing you can see if we zoom in right here is that the beard of Charles's axe is actually going to potentially catch on Simon's hand. I think that's totally fine with these rules. This is really cool. You see them playing sticky hand here. So this is uh, uh, one of my favorite moments in this fight, just watching it quickly. So we go back. Charles swings, Simon picks up contact. As Simon swings, Charles, Charles, even though he doesn't have a lot of great vision in that helmet, can feel Simon's axe coming down and manages to block it with the head of his own axe while maintaining contact with the haft of the weapon and then push it up and out. Now at this point, Simon's recovering the axe back. There's a chance, at this point, I think a lot of the fancier HEMA folks, if we go back just a couple frames, would say from this position, if Charles can get the inside of his axe head to the, uh, towards the camera and then lever this hand up and potentially rotate around this front hand, he would be able to push Simon's axe down and out in sort of a, a, sort of, um, a kayak rowing technique. But instead it's a straight pop-up, which leaves him a little bit open. Now at this point, Charles is taking a big step into his wind-up 
and that delays his shot. So right here, Simon's armpit's wide open, but you can see that Charles has taken this shuffle step forward and is pulling the axe back to get more power. If he was able to deliver a power blow through a shorter technique without needing to take that step in, he would be able to get Simon in the armpit before Simon gets that. See, he's rotating the bottom of the axe handle around to make the block get his hands in front of him, and then the counter chop. Now the counter chop didn't work super well because he had to defend himself, but I think this is an opportunity where if we go back again, from here, if someone was able to do a shorter movement instead of the wind up, step, and then swing like he was swinging into a tree, might have been able to tag Simon in the armpit, which would have really hurt. Here they cross up. Moving forward, we see more sort of taking turns. I attack, you attack, I attack, you attack, because you've only got, you've only got the same weapon for defense and offense. And although they're both heavily armored, they don't want to be trading painful shots. Because you can tell this one's going to hurt. Simon sees the opening here. Charles is dropping his hands down to block. So Simon aims for the hip, lands sort of. Now here's an opportunity for us to look at what happens when you have both of your hands on the same side of your body versus the opposite side of your body. This would be potentially, uh, and I'm not 100% certain if this is a, uh, considered a, a, a thrust. So it may not be allowed in the ACL. But at this point, all I'm seeing that Charles could do is lift this front hand up. And once it's up, he could basically thrust Simon in the face with the butt of his axe. Now, you're not allowed to thrust with the tips of metal weapons. You don't want them going through an eye slot. But with the butt of an axe, uh, a pummel strike to the head might jar Simon a little bit. The challenge is everything else is on on that side of Charles's body. So there's not a lot for him to do here. Um, whereas Simon's hands, he's got one here and one about here. He's sort of more, he's got a, uh, a hand on either side of his body. And you'll see that that comes in when Simon starts to drive this right hand forward with the butt of his ax. Now he uses sort of almost like a knuckle punch. Um, I'm not sure if it's his gauntlet or his haft that hits Charles, but you see he goes into this position, gets the big block, and it's not too difficult to block because, again, all of the offense has to come from the right side of Charles' body. A little bit of winding. Now Charles has both of his hands on opposite sides of the body. So does Simon. They're in an equal threat position. But I don't think Charles is expecting a threat from the back of the weapon. There's that big heavy punch. And if you look at Simon's body mechanics here, big heavy punch to the back. He's levering around the haft and he's driving power off of this back foot, right? So he's driving power from here. Oop, I can't do it. Driving power from here, and then watch the, the, the back hand travels this way, the front hand travels back, and then the body rotates. And then another thing that you see, especially bigger guys do that works really well, is the hip shift back as the upper body moves forward. So the center of gravity is still relatively centered, but he's able to drive forward with the upper body while pulling the, the lower body back. So that's a really powerful shot. You can see it rocks Charles. He tries to recover as quick as he can and throw a counter swing, but at this point you can see Simon's in a good position. He's off body. This is where I said when you've got both your hands on the same side of your body, all the threat is going to come from that side. But the good news is Simon is in a much better wound up and ready to cork position, so he gets his next follow-up into Charles a little bit quicker and a little bit more accurate, whereas Charles is a little blind at this point. Unless he's looking at the very corner of his eye slot, he doesn't know exactly where Simon is, and his shot goes a little deep, and you can see Simon's shot comes inside. So Simon gets the inside angle with his haft, which is going to deflect any really deep blow from Charles to the outside. So Simon beats him to the punch. He staggers back. Now at this point, there's an opportunity if Simon wants to charge in, probably bowl him over. Um, this is practice, or maybe Simon's winded. Um, so he lets him recover. Now the second half of this fight. Here's where I get into the headspace a little bit. If I'm Charles, I'm thinking, all right, bully, you're not going to push me around, right? I don't know Charles. I don't know if that's his mindset, but I'm going to make a determined effort to show a big opponent that just landed a heavy hit on me that that's not going to stop me. Here's, however, where what I see, uh, in my opinion, what is an overcommitment to attack as he steps in. So you remember in the first half of the fight, they both got their weapons in front of them. They're throwing those ranging attacks until they take that extra half step forward. They've still got that same sort of mirror position. Here you can see Charles is already winding up, and he doesn't realize that uh, Simon's got a good attack ready to go here. And you see Simon throw this attack fairly frequently, 
it's going to be a little dip here and then a throw into that space off body. A little difficult to draw on screen. But watch the head of Simon's weapon. He dips back, rolls around in a moulinet, and comes in with hard power. So it doesn't look like there's a power shot to that side from here because you have to move the head of the weapon around. Sort of like a one-handed sword moulinet. And if you look, both hands go in rotation, right? So he has to get both of his hands up over his head to, to manage that rotation with power. Now, Charles, he's telegraphing. He's stepping in with a chop straight down all the way from out here. He's lifting. He's winding. And you can see he's stepped forward, and he's sort of doing... Um, I'm not a golfer, but it looks to me like a little bit of a golf swing. Like, you throw your entire body into the swing before the weapon starts to deliver. It's a great way to throw power, but it means he's getting outspeeded and outtimed. So Simon manages the blow here. The way his hands are still across his body, sort of towards the camera, still offers him some protection. You see the hips kick back out again. But that chop into the shoulder, I think, uh, Simon told me, is what ended up sending Charles to the hospital and broke his armor. Now, things are moving fast. Charles doesn't necessarily see that the fight's over at this point. Or, sorry, um, Simon doesn't necessarily see that the, the fight's over at this point um, and does the follow-through with the butt stroke. So this butt stroke, again, I'm not 100% sure if it lands with a gauntlet. I think it does. But the fact that he's holding on to the half makes that a lot stronger than just a right cross. But when you look at Simon's body mechanics, look, he's still got his, his weight forward. You see him plant that uh, right foot, and he's levering the left hand back. So that's a really heavy punch. And that, that right there is going to jar your head inside your helmet. To me, that looks, when you're watching it at speed, that looks like the blow that ends the fight, because that's a, probably a pretty decent chance at a concussion. Uh, even with the helmet on, you're not going to get a skull fracture, but your brain stands still while your skull goes bang. So uh, your brain is bouncing off the inside of your skull. So, uh, but you can see the, the shoulder pauldron has come off the right shoulder for protection. So right here, that's where uh, the shoulder injury happened. So anyway, that's an ACL practice fight. Um, a pretty tough fight. Let's watch it one more time at speed and uh, see if there's anything else we can pick up. So they both got really good range. The other thing to point out, it's really tough to hit with just the head of an axe, right? It's a very small striking surface. There's a good chance. We see it just a little bit where someone's just a little too close for it to land. That, yeah, you can see that shoulder pauldron flopping off as well. So wicked brutal fight. Um, and again, nowadays ACL, they'd be using longer axes uh, for fear of people getting into clinches. The last thing I'll point out, both these guys keep a really, really wide stance. They're both really well based. You know, so there's not a lot of opportunities to grapple or to quickly kick someone down. I think both these guys are fighting with their weapons, their axes, because they know in a one-on-one -on -one fight against each other, with both of them well-grounded and well-balanced, the odds of just knocking someone over with a grapple are relatively slim. So, again, like I said, I'm not an ACL fighter. Uh, I'm not an HMB fighter. I do a little bit, uh, mostly for fun. So there's a decent chance I'm missing a lot of rules, missing a lot of techniques. If you would like to see more steel weapon combat on this channel, or if you've got any feedback or input on things I missed, please comment below. Other people are watching, and, and um, I love getting private feedback. I'm getting lots of it. Thank you so much. Um, I just often feel like when it comes to things that come down to the fighting analysis, when someone's like, oh, well, the person was open here at this point for X reason, um, that's, that's useful information for everybody. So please leave a comment. Anyway, thank you very much.